A pharmaceutical salesman's outlook on love transforms when he encounters a free-spirited artist with a neurological condition. In 1996, a promiscuous yet talented salesman, Jamie Randall, works in an electronic store where he flirts with customers including Christy, the girlfriend of his manager Jerry. The womanizer shares a private moment with Christy during his shift in the store's back room. Unfortunately, her phone inadvertently dials her boyfriend, revealing her infidelity. As a result, the enraged supervisor punches his employee in the face and terminates his employment. Despite his bleeding nose, the salesman returns to the store and starts flirting with another customer, Amber. When he sees his furious manager approaching, the promiscuous man rushes to exit the door. Jamie meets his family that evening. His father James and sister Helen are doctors, while his wealthy brother Josh works in the software industry. Shortly after, his mom Nancy calls everyone together for dinner. While eating, they celebrate the sale of their family members' medical software company. Suddenly, Josh's girlfriend Farah asks about the womanizer's occupation. Upon Nancy's explanation that her son works at an electronics store, the celebrated man chuckles and casually discloses that Jamie was fired. To assist his unemployed brother in finding a new job, he refers him to a job opportunity as a pharmaceutical salesman. Jamie attends a Pfizer training program the following day. In one of the lectures, the speaker, Gina, discusses Zoloft, a medication to treat mental illness. When the knowledgeable trainee interjects, Mentioning that the pill is linked to suicidal thoughts among teenagers, the woman contends that such claims are unproven. In response, the intelligent participant insists that it has been proven, just not widely reported. However, the speaker emphasizes that his role is to persuade doctors to prescribe the medication. After the orientation, it becomes clear that he is involved romantically with Gina. On his first day on the job, Jamie meets his regional manager, Bruce Jackson, who reiterates the importance of meeting his sales quota. Following their meeting, they proceed to a hospital's parking lot, where the salesman attempts to pitch the medication to doctors who decline his offer. The next day, Jamie and his manager wait in the lobby. Suddenly, a striking woman passes by, prompting the sales representative to address her as Lisa. Upon hearing this, she gazes at him with a puzzled expression. When the supervisor points out that his employee used the wrong name, the flirtatious man reveals that it is his strategy for getting the woman's attention. He clarifies that once she approaches to correct him, he'll apologize and pretend to mistake her for the person who stopped calling him. The salesman is confident that his tactic will lead her to believe she needs to earn his approval, making it easier for him to ask her out from that point forward. Afterward, the two men head to the second floor. Bruce explains to Jamie that his mission is to persuade Dr. Knight to prescribe Zoloff instead of Prozac to his patients. However, when they find the physician in a sour mood, they leave and return the next day. While they wait the following morning, they witness a highly successful Prozac salesman, Trey Hannigan, who charmingly interacts with the receptionist and promptly enters the doctor's office. Before leaving Jamie alone, Bruce elaborates that if he manages to seal a deal with Dr. Dr. Knight, it will open up the opportunity to secure the Chicago market. When he goes upstairs, the salesman approaches the receptionist, Gail, who asks him to return in five weeks. Upon hearing this, Jamie flirts with a woman, persuading her to let him leave his samples near the doctor's office. However, Dr. Knight intends to send him away after seeing him. As the physician looks for his secretary, Cindy, the salesman seizes the opportunity and discreetly places all the competitor's samples into his stroller bag. After exiting the building, he discards the boxes. In the following days, Jamie attempts to get closer to Dr. Knight by consistently flirting with the receptionist and even becoming romantically involved with the secretary. With no progress in sight, Bruce intensifies the pressure on the salesman, urging him to close the deal to meet the sales quota. Desperate, Jamie approaches Dr. Knight and presents a $1,000 check the following day, describing it as a unique Pfizer preceptorship opportunity for him to shadow the doctor. Upon hearing this, the physician accepts the offer and permits the salesman to observe his patient's examination the following morning. As they prepare to enter the room, Dr. Knight advises Jamie to introduce himself as an intern in case anyone inquires. Subsequently, they meet the patient, Maggie Murdoch who suffers from early-onset Parkinson's disease. As the woman explains her use of Prozac, the fake intern interjects, pointing out that Zoloft tends to have fewer side effects. A moment later, the patient consults the doctor regarding a patch on her chest. When she shows it to him, the physician reassures her that it's simply a spider bite. While he observes, Jamie discreetly peeks at the woman's body, immediately captivated by her. Nonetheless, the patient discovers he's a pharmaceutical sales representative when she notices his car loaded with medication boxes 
in the parking lot. This revelation prompts her to strike him with her bag because of her perverse behavior earlier. She insists on apologizing, and when he complies, he invites her for a coffee date. However, instead of accepting, she captures a photo of him and walks away. Shortly after the incident, Jamie calls Cindy, fabricating the need for Maggie's number, claiming he must contact the patient's other doctors. Meanwhile, his brother Josh arrives, visibly upset after being kicked out by his girlfriend due to an obsession with explicit content. As his sibling immerses himself in video games, the salesman contacts the woman, questioning her about the photo she took. However, she just laughs, not answering the inquiry. Not long after, he makes a second attempt, inviting her for a coffee date. Maggie then directs him to meet her at Lulu's cafe the following afternoon, revealing that she works as a waitress. After her shift, Maggie talks to Jamie, who notices her hand tremors. Because of this, he assumes that she's nervous and interested in him. However, the woman says she knows what he's after and wants the same thing. Shortly after, they hook up in the woman's apartment. After their steamy moment, she asks him to leave. As he exits the apartment, the salesman looks forward to seeing her again. Over the following days, they continue meeting each other for short yet passionate moments. One night after doing the deed, Jamie flaunts his memorization skills and shares that he quit med school because he has attention deficit disorder, making it hard to sit through a class. When he asks her why she doesn't have a boyfriend, the woman points out that she wants to keep things casual. The following day, as Jamie is about to dispose of another batch of Prozac samples, Trey catches him in the act and punches him in the stomach. He threatens to destroy the salesman if he gets on his way and demands that he stay away from Maggie. Afterward, the salesman heads to the doctor's office, but the cold Gale and Cindy prohibit him from leaving samples. Following his bad day, Jamie visits Maggie, who is busy organizing her photographs on the table. While they have a meal together, the woman reveals that Trey is her ex-boyfriend, and their relationship ended when she found out he was married. Later as they do the deed, the salesman experiences trouble, leading them to pause their passionate encounter and talk. In their conversation, Maggie teases Jamie's performance anxiety, assuming that it's because she mentioned her past involvement with Trey. However, he denies this, stating he doesn't care about him. Afterward, the woman brings up a rumor that Pfizer is developing a masculinity-enhancing medication, which piques his curiosity. The following morning, Jamie expresses his admiration for Maggie's painting, prompting her to explain that she created it when she could still hold the paintbrush. As he walks towards the door, he assures her he will call despite her request not to. After he leaves, the artist retrieves the man's photo which she captured from the parking lot. In the evening, while on their way to a bar, Jamie inquires about the performance-enhancing medication with Bruce. When the regional manager confirms it, the sales representative requests to be assigned to that account, expressing confidence in his ability to sell it. Upon reaching their destination with Josh, Bruce notices Trey and Dr. Knight, leading him to instruct Jamie to approach the physician. When the salesman approaches approaches the duo, he provokes Trey by mentioning his infidelity to his wife, causing the man to leave. Finally, when he is alone with the physician, the representative attempts to convince Dr. Knight that Zoloft results in 13% fewer outbursts than Prozac. However, he fails to persuade him. Upon returning home, Jamie calls Maggie, who abruptly hangs up when he admits he enjoys hearing her voice. Hearing this, Josh teases his flirtatious brother, recognizing that he has finally fallen in love with someone. The following morning, the salesman catches Maggie, who is about to board a bus to Canada with senior citizens to get cheap medication. When the artist informs him that she'll be back the next day, Jamie returns to the same spot after work and sleeps in his car while waiting for the bus to arrive. Upon seeing the salesman the next morning, Maggie appreciates his romantic gesture and agrees to continue seeing him. The following day, Bruce reaches out to Jamie with an opportunity to sell the performance-boosting medication, which is a huge success. One evening, after spending time with a salesman, Maggie takes the videotape recorder and films him. Suddenly, Jamie calls her his girlfriend, which she acknowledges. In the following days, the two enjoy each other's company, strengthening their connection. Eventually, they decide to move in together. One evening, Maggie confronts Jamie Jamie about his dishonesty with his mother regarding his sales numbers. In his defense, he explains that he inflated the figures to make himself sound more successful. Hearing this, the artist points out his apparent need for external validation, and emphasizes that he is already a talented and intelligent individual who doesn't need to lie to appear better. After work the following day, Jamie visits Maggie and nervously confesses his romantic feelings for her. He explains that he has never said those words to anyone. The artist provides him with water 
to help him calm down but does not immediately reciprocate by saying she also loves him. Maggie's condition worsens the next day and she realizes she has run out of medication. Meanwhile, Jamie visits Dr. Knight and proposes that the doctor prescribe Zoloft to his patients in exchange for a complimentary supply of the performance boosting medication. When the salesman returns to Maggie's apartment, the intoxicated artist narrates the experience of waiting three hours at a clinic to get a prescription. Unfortunately, the pharmacy was already closed by the time she obtained it. Unable to take her medication, the woman's self-esteem drops, and she begins to argue with Jamie, questioning why he would choose someone like her. Their disagreement causes him to walk out, but when he hears the artist dropping her glass, he immediately returns and embraces her tightly. He invites her to attend a medical conference in Chicago the next day. There, an older woman approaches Maggie and recognizes her condition. She hands her a flyer for a Parkinson's disease support group across the street, prompting the artist to attend. As Maggie listens to the participants, she messages Jamie to join her. When the salesman arrives, he smiles upon seeing his girlfriend immersed in the gathering. After the meeting, Jamie encounters the spouse of an attendee who is dealing with a severe form of the condition. The stranger advises Jamie to leave his partner and find a healthier woman, explaining that one of the challenges of the disease is the eventual loss of motor control, which will be a lot for him to handle. After the support group event, Maggie expresses her gratitude to her boyfriend for bringing her to Chicago, as she realizes people like her understand her condition. She thanks him for not running away despite her illness and tells him she loves him. Troubled by the stranger's advice, Jamie spends the night researching potential cures for the condition. However, he stops when the artist wakes up. The following day, the salesman visits Dr. Knight and seeks his assistance in connecting with specialists who can help treat Maggie. Over the next few days, he takes his girlfriend to various doctors, and she undergoes multiple tests. One morning, the couple flew 2,000 miles to see a specialist, only to discover that their appointment had been cancelled. Upon receiving this disappointing news, Jamie couldn't help but express his frustration to the receptionist. When Maggie hears him raising his voice, she picks up her bag and walks away, causing Jamie to follow her outside the building. The artist starts to lose hope in finding a cure and recognizes that her boyfriend only wants to be with her when she's cured, prompting her to break up with him. The woman adds that she doesn't want to be someone holding him back now that he's progressing in his career. That night, Jamie collects his belongings from Maggie's apartment and leaves. After the breakup, they are devastated and struggle to sleep properly. One day, Dr. Knight invites the salesman to a pajama party hosted by Cassie, the woman whom Jamie once called Lisa. When his brother is about to decline, Josh grabs the phone, pretends to be his sibling, and accepts the invitation. Upon arriving at the luxurious house with his sibling, Jamie enjoys drinks and converses with Dr. Knight. The doctor vents his frustrations about the challenges of his medical profession, explaining that he has to contend with patients who correct his diagnosis and believe what they read online. Suddenly, Cassie interrupts their conversation and introduces Jamie to Kay so they can all spend a steamy night together. When the salesman awakens, he feels extreme pain in his private area, which leads him to call his brother so they can head to the hospital. While on their way, Josh expresses his gratitude to his sibling for bringing him to the party, stating it was the best night of his life. Upon their arrival at the hospital, Jamie informs the receptionist that he's experiencing a reaction to the performance boosting medication, and she advises him to wait. As they sit in the waiting area, the salesman receives a message on his pager indicating that he successfully secured the Chicago market. His brother congratulates him but he seems dissatisfied despite the achievement. When Jamie enters a restaurant to meet his manager the following night, the salesman runs into Maggie, who's with her new boyfriend, Justin. Just as she's about to leave, he tells her how pleasant it is to see her again. Suddenly, Bruce enters the restaurant and greets Jamie. When the manager informs Maggie that the salesman obtained his desired market, she congratulates her ex-boyfriend for achieving his goal. While they dine, the supervisor informs the sales representative that he needs to relocate to Chicago as a part of his promotion. The following afternoon, as Jamie packs his belongings, he takes the videotape recorder and plays it. He becomes emotional as he watches Maggie describe and cherish their special moment together. Realizing he wants her back, Jamie drives to the artist's workplace, but her co-worker informs him that she already left for Canada to get affordable medication. Hearing this, the salesman drives as fast as possible to catch the bus on the highway. When he spots Maggie by the window, he communicates through gestures that he wishes 
offers to speak with her. However, she responds by indicating she doesn't want to. In response, Jamie accelerates and overtakes the bus. When the bus eventually pulls over, he hurries to board it and requests a five-minute talk with Maggie. She agrees and follows him outside to have a private conversation. In tears, the salesman opens up, explaining that he had never truly cared about anyone or anything in his entire life until he met her. He adds that he realizes he is enough because of her and emphasizes that they need each other. Hearing this, a tearful Maggie initially disagrees, but Jamie insists she needs someone to care for her. In response, the artist expresses her concerns, stating that she'll need him more than he needs her, which doesn't seem fair. However, Jamie asserts that it's okay, offering his support for her in every way. The salesman explains that even if there's a version of them in an alternate universe where they're both healthy, he won't choose that over what they have. Hearing this, Maggie hugs him tightly, grateful for his genuine love. As a result, the couple reconciles, and the salesman decides not to go to Chicago. Instead, he chooses to continue medical school to stay with his girlfriend, whom he claims has changed his life forever. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.